Health News at 4 starts right now. Police say a series of car break-ins led to a chase across two counties and then a crash. How authorities say this all started coming up. Plus, tornadoes leave a long path of destruction across parts of three states. We'll look at some of the damage left behind. Feelings of sadness, feelings of hopelessness, uh, irritability, anger, those are symptoms of depression. That's there and that becomes more, uh, more intense. The holidays are a joyous time for most people, but for many, it can be the most difficult time of the year. How people that are suffering this holiday season can find some peace. First here at four car break ins led to a police chase that spanned two counties early this morning and included multiple law enforcement agencies. We want to get to Maria DeBone. She joins us live this afternoon from Ashboro, where all of this started. Maria. Well, Ashboro police was patrolling the northern area around three this morning after there were several car break ins reported in that area over the past few weeks. A police officer noticed similar behavior to that at the summer's run apartments and decided to investigate there. Now the officer noticed someone driving out of the apartment complex and started following them. That vehicle started speeding, so the officer attempted to pull them over. The vehicle didn't stop, so officers chased them for 12 miles into Guilford County. Officers ended the pursuit, but shortly after, the Guilford County Sheriff's Office notified them, saying they responded to a crash involving a vehicle they believed was the suspect vehicle officers had tried to stop in Ashboro. This was at I-85 South near I-22 C exit. The State Highway Patrol said the vehicle caught fire and was burned when they arrived. Now, the State Highway Patrol has confirmed the vehicle was involved in the chase and said no one was inside when the troopers arrived in Ashboro. Police said the tags on it was reported stolen to the Burlington Police Department and the Ashboro Police said they are investigating that and following up now on several tips they received. Live in Ashboro tonight, Maria DeBone, WXII 12 News. Thank you, Maria. We are working to find out if anyone was hurt in this crash in Winston-Salem earlier today. It happened on North Point Boulevard at Pythabra Road. Forsyth County Emergency Services says calls came in for this crash shortly before 11 this morning. A minivan ended up off the road down a hill. We saw at least one other car at the scene that was damaged. We have reached out to police for more details and we will pass along that information once it becomes available. A man from Florida has been charged for a deadly crash on I-40 in Alamance County. This happened earlier this month. Highway Patrol says Rubicel Hernandez was driving the wrong way on the interstate when he hit Kara Witherspoon head on and she did die at the scene. Hernandez was released from the hospital yesterday and then arrested. Investigators believe he was driving while impaired. He is facing several charges, including second degree murder. Police in Ramsar this afternoon need some help finding a seriously injured man. We're told that at about 615 this morning last Monday, officers were called to a report of an injured person. This was on Highway 64 near Liberty Street. So more than a week ago, if you have any information that could help police find this person, you're asked to contact Captain Jessup or Officer Smith 336-824-8663. You can also reach out to the Randolph County Crime Stoppers hotline as well. Across three different states Tuesday night into this morning after a storm system ripped across the south, killing two and damaging dozens of homes. Heavy rain and storms also caused all kinds of power outages and major disruptions across the area. While the worst of the threat is now over, people who have been impacted have a long road ahead. Gloria Pasmino reports. She was just screaming and hollering. Everybody was scared. Severe storms and tornadoes swept through parts of the south Tuesday into Wednesday morning. The National Weather Service said at least 30 reports of tornadoes were made since Tuesday afternoon, mostly in central and southern Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. You know, we were about to sit down and eat, and we just, wind started hitting. We tried to get, got to a safe place as fast as possible, and as soon as we got there, it was over. I made it into what I call a safe room, and by the time I got there, it was over. Um, it it might have lasted maybe 15 seconds. In Mississippi, an entire bridge washed out. Trucks overturned on the highway and a local firehouse sustaining major damage. From what it looks like right now, this building will have to come down uh, and we'll have to start the rebuild process. In Alabama, this apartment complex was ripped apart, exposing the inside of homes. 
displaced residents taking shelter at a local middle school. Threats of severe weather remained during Wednesday morning, but the system is expected to diminish through the afternoon as it makes its way across southeast Georgia and north Florida. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. As we take a live look from our Winston-Salem sky cam, the rain is out of the triad, at least for now, but we are tracking chances for more rain this week. Meteorologist Michelle Kennedy is in the WXII 12 First Warning Weather Center with a look at the forecast. Michelle, what can we expect? Yeah, well, tonight we're talking about that cold weather, of course, as we see that cold air rush in from the west. So scattered showers and storms lasting all the way up through parts of New England. And there we have the very cold conditions that are set up over Canada. So we've got some wintry weather that has been rolling through. We're seeing temperatures, though, now begin to cool from those nice 60s and sunshine that we've had. Here's that cold front. It is slipping east. We've got that ridge of high pressure building in from the west. And after, what, 24 hours of so many storm reports for the southeast, we were really lucky that our severe weather weather threat did diminish and move south earlier today. Tornado reports, you can see many of them stretched out from areas of Louisiana east into Georgia even. Unfortunately, this system is out of here, but it was really extensive, affecting a lot of folks out here. And then showers for us have been very beneficial. We've had totals ranging anywhere from a half an inch all the way up to an inch across much of the southern triad. 59 degrees right now in the triad with 65 in Raleigh and 46 in Galax. We're going to show you some beautiful views as we started to clear out from earlier today. It's coming up. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. All that rain we saw last night and into this morning delayed plans to convert parts of 1st and 2nd Streets in Winston-Salem to two-way traffic. That change will impact 1st Street from Peters Creek Parkway to Spruce Street and on 2nd Street from Peters Creek to Broad Street. City leaders say the changeover will now happen tonight instead of last night. And the holiday season is a merry, bright and joyous time for many, but for others it can be one of the most difficult times of the year. I caught up with an expert today to talk about how holiday season stressors can really impact mental health. We know that about two thirds of individuals who live with depression, live with anxiety, do tend to feel much more increased stressors during the holidays. The time of year to deck the halls is here, but for some, this time of year also comes with something called seasonal affective disorder, a type of depressive mood disorder related to the seasonal variations of light. The days are you know, now getting shorter, the nights are much longer. Executive Director of the Forsyth County Mental Health Association, Andy Hagler, says that coupled with holiday stressors can really dim the season that is supposed to be so merry and bright. The, the effects of depression, the loneliness, the isolation, the feelings of sadness, feelings of hopelessness, uh, irritability, anger, those are symptoms of depression. That's there and that becomes more, uh, more intense. He says for people suffering this season, self-care is imperative and ways to cope can include things like taking walks, stargazing and setting aside alone time to gather thoughts and de-stress. Allow yourself to feel down. You know, the holidays are also a time to reflect and to feel and to think. So if you're having a moment or time or whatever that you're not at your best or feeling down or whatever, that's okay. You know, these are, these are human emotions. He says to be mindful of healthy habits and watch things like alcohol and caffeine intake. But most importantly, try to surround yourself with those who support you. The main thing is really focus that this is a season and it is a time to be with those that support and love you. So if things are just a little less than perfect, then it's OK. And he says his office does see an uptick in calls and support groups this time of year. He says there are a wide range of services they provide to help people who might be in need of some help this holiday season. And a reminder, if you or someone you know is in distress, you can call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. That number is available 24 hours a day. For seven years, Salem Music was a place for the people of Winston-Salem and beyond to learn and explore the world of music, but now it's shutting its doors. WXI 12's Joshua Davis spoke with the owner about what the shop meant to him and to the community. The owner of Salem Music said it was a place for the community to have a good time and to have the opportunity to experience something special. 
Walking into Salem Music, you immediately notice the warm, welcoming atmosphere. The walls decorated with music legends and instruments, and it was all designed by Brent Bristow, the owner. The design meant to encourage growing musicians. You know, some take to it, some don't, but the ones that do take to it, their parents are beaming, the kids are beaming, they want to come back, they want to record, they want to make a record someday. Bristow says Salem Music is closing because the owner of the building is selling. But Bristow was grateful for the time the store was open. He says he appreciates the memories made and the people he met. Whatever I thought I knew about the power of music to change lives and to enrich lives, uh, I didn't know anything until this particular part of my life and this vision of what this place could be. And he says, through the years, the spirit of music was present in every person who came through his door. I'm really proud of it and really sad to see it go. It's kind of like a grief, grieving reality, the saying goodbye to all those memories, all those people. Bristow says seven years is plenty, but now it's time to move on. To the community, he says thank you for the love and kindness. This is the cherry on top of seven years of effort love, and uh, blood, sweat, and tears. Bristow is moving to Florida, but he still plans to be the old guy entertaining people with a guitar. In Winston-Salem, Joshua Davis, WXII 12 News. Joshua, thank you. Just into the newsroom, musician Christine McVie has died. She sang lead on many of Fleetwood Mac's most memorable hits. The band announced her death on social media, saying, quote, there are no words to describe our sadness at the passing of Christine McVie. No cause of death or other details were immediately provided, but a family statement did indicate that she died after a short illness. McVie was 79 years old.